The following program is brought to you by Caltech. India just had the largest democratic election in history. <laughs> 850 million eligible voters, 30 different parties at least to choose between, and a 66% participation rate in an election process that took one month to complete. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people, incredible feat. But whereas everyone else was focusing on the candidates, I was focusing on the election system used to elect those same candidates. India uses a process called single replacement vote. It's not like the majority vote system we have in the US. Instead, a, a voter submits a, a preference ranking for all the candidates. And then a complicated process takes place that determines who you actually voted for. You didn't necessarily vote for your top person. If they were you know, going to lose automatically, you don't want to waste your vote on them. And the process takes care of it. But it's very complicated. The whole process takes a long time. And there's a chance that with this voting system, the person who got the most votes doesn't even win. It's a little bit strange. And being American, I think our voting system is better. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a better voting system now. OK, and it's going to be the American one, because that's how it's going to work. OK, so we want a few things from our voting system. Some very simple, simple things. We don't want to end up in a dictatorship. <laughs> OK. We don't want it that one person's preferences determine who actually wins. OK, very simple. The second one, and this one might be more of a stretch, we want unanimity. If everyone votes for the same person, they should win. Hopefully, we're in agreement this is good. OK. <laughs> now, the third one, which is where the vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry comes in, is we want independence of irrelevant alternatives. And although this sounds complicated, ice cream will show it's quite simple. So let's see. Out of the audience, who likes vanilla more than chocolate? All right. And who likes chocolate more than vanilla? So I can't see, but there was more moaning for the chocolate, so we'll go with that. OK. So chocolate, so say as a group, we voted for chocolate, and we've gone to the ice cream store, and we're about to get our chocolate ice cream. But then the server says, oh, wait. We also have strawberry. Now, what should happen? There's a couple things. One, we could stick with chocolate, if we really like chocolate. Two, we could switch to strawberry. Maybe we like strawberry more. But what shouldn't happen, what better not happen, is we now want to go with vanilla. This would be bad. Adding strawberry should not like us now like vanilla more than chocolate. And that's what independence of irrelevant alternatives means that by adding extra options on the side, it shouldn't change the preferences between two that we've already decided between. So we've got our three criteria. Don't want a dictatorship. Want unanimity, so if everyone votes the same thing. And we want this sort of never get vanilla if we like chocolate more. <laughs> OK. Which is a shame, because I like vanilla. Anyways. <laughs> it turns out it's impossible to create a voting system that satisfies these three things. If we want unanimity and we don't want to end up with vanilla, we have to have a dictatorship. This isn't good. This is a problem. Economists hated it when this result came out. But it turns out this is how it actually works. And if we look at the US system, the one that I thought was so good initially, it turns out that we violate all of these things. <laughs> OK. So 2000 election, all right? In Florida, everything went wrong. It turns out Bush got more of the popular vote in Florida because Nader was in the race. So by adding Nader, we switched between two candidates. Not so good. Also, in that same election, Gore won the popular vote in the entire country. More people wanted him, but he also lost. So we somehow violated two of the things. At least we're not a dictatorship, hopefully, um, but still not a very good voting system. And this is why the Indian voting system sort of works the way it does, where in almost all cases it works perfectly. There's a few very extreme edge cases where something goes wrong. But most of the time, it works wonderfully. And people now, especially legislators, are realizing that the system we have in the US isn't that good. In many elections, you have a lot of candidates run. And then whoever's the top two, they now do a runoff between the two of them. This works better. Gets rid of the Nader problem. 
but it turns out there are other ways to do better. And hopefully going forward, we can switch to these better voting systems. Because we don't want a world where we have a problem. Where the problem is that it's not who votes that counts, but it's who counts the votes. Thank you.